Good morning, this is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the snowy off-grid project. Snowing again. It's supposed to get an inch of accumulation, but it's snowing really slowly today. It's been snowing for hours, and you can see it hasn't amounted to much yet. So it's really slow and gentle. The uh, birds stopped laying eggs, but then again we have a super, super deep freeze. And um, they can always stop for a day or so and start up again depending on stress and weather conditions now let's see how it goes but we're supposed to have really really cold in the next few days I am uh, reinforcing their shelter sorry I did not take my camera with me but I'm reinforcing the chickens shelter and trying to give them more protection from the cold they're sort of just lazing around right now not really doing much just sort of hanging out but they're all alive and well one of my tiny, tiny little bantams gave me an egg. Let me take you over and show you. Look at this tiny little egg. Look at how little it is. It's so little compared to the others. That's cute. My little tiny birds are giving me eggs. That's nice. That's the very first. Now I've got two, three, three bantam hens. Tiny little hens. And that's the first bantam egg I've had yet. Now the, um, the, I believe the white hens are laying the white eggs and the silver and white hens are laying the brown eggs. And they, this was the last batch I've got so they're slowing down. I was getting eight eggs a day and now I'm not so they've slowed down. So let's see what happens here in the next couple days but uh, they'll probably start up again. It's just really, really, really cold out right now. It's um, 16 degrees out, and it was really cold last night. And I'm having struggles with a tiny house right now because my wood stove went out last night. Not that the wood burned up or consumed itself, it just didn't burn, which was weird. So it was, um, what was it in here this morning? 46 degrees inside the tiny house this morning. So... It is, I can't see the time right now, but I'm trying to warm it up in here and bring it back up to temperature. Well, it's snowing all day. I think it's like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you'll notice some tracks all over the ground. I haven't had my camera out because of the snow, sorry. But uh, you'll just have to listen to me talk and tell you what I did. Batteries are gone. I took the guy forklift batteries from over here and wheeled them over one at a time to the uh, behind the tiny house. Now the work is slow going because it's treacherous out here. It's all slippery ice now with snow on top, which doesn't help. So forgive the shakiness of the camera as I waddle like a penguin. I've got some wire that Goliath man gave me strung out through the house laying here. And I've got a 12 volt battery bank of forklift batteries lined up. I'm doing my, trying my hardest to keep them from getting wet. It was, uh, it's quite a job trying to work in the snow. It's just the same as rain. And I've got them on a pallet on top of two pieces of wood. I, I basically took a better pallet and then took the two pieces of plywood that they were sitting on and put them over here so that I have room for the good battery bank when that when it arrives as well and then I'll be able to build a little bit of insulation insulated box around this and maybe blow some hot air into the box later I want to build the proper battery bank on the back of the house but that'll be later so yeah forgive me for not having much video but it'll wreck the camera um, so I'm just working out here and putting this together I am um, going to install a switch a big master switch on the inside to the positive terminals so that uh, I have a, a disconnect and a place to screw the wires onto. It'll be like a um, terminal post for me. So anyway, I gotta go get, at, get that out of the RV and uh, continue wiring things up. Well, I got the forklift batteries hooked up to the tiny house on wheels. Now, 
I have to admit an error. I had sworn that I had the temperature compensation hooked up and I did not know it um, was supposed to display on the home screen and it wasn't hooked up properly so um, I got that going that is hooked up to the forklift batteries and it is showing right there on the front display of the charge controller so forgive me for that stupid error now this is odd okay here we have the oh it went into absorb for a minute I don't know okay this is showing a green light between yellow and green 13.3 volts at only 66 watts coming in. Now what is odd is a minute ago there just turned to green. A minute ago I had 12.2 volts at 19 degrees Fahrenheit. So this is compensating for temperature. All right, this is adjusting. It has a computer algorithm. Blah, blah. Has a computer formula. It built into the system that helps it know what the real proper voltage is well better than I do anyway so it is showing 13.4 volts it is taking a charge but the odd thing is a minute ago without the solar hooked up it was 12.2 volts so I'm not quite sure I am gonna go out and do the hydrometer readings in a little bit here but I'm gonna come in and warm up for a while first but the forklift batteries are now the primary powering source of the tiny house on wheels. The golf cart batteries are completely disconnected. And I am running purely on those old forklift batteries right now. It is a uh, quarter to two in the afternoon. I had to sweep the snow off the solar panels because they had about a half inch of snow on them. To, they was pulling in, believe it or not, 9 watts covered in snow. I was quite surprised. With a half inch of snow on them, they were pulling in 9 watts. Now 63 watts, 64. But I'm going to just have to keep go, um, sweeping the snow off them continuously. Because it is snowing pretty heavily still. Um, and see how much power I can pull into these batteries during the daytime hours. And I only have 2.5 hours left of light. So, we'll see what we get. I'll probably end up running the Harbor Freight Generator, pulling it up over to behind the tiny house on wheels, and taking my battery charger outside, covering them all up in a tarp. Put it, I'll put it on the pallet next to the batteries and cover it all up with a tarp nicely, and run that generator for a while after the sun goes down. Well, the daylight is gone. There is no sun. But, I want to get some more charge into these later on today and this later this afternoon and just make sure that I can properly top off these forklift batteries now a sunny day would be very welcome and I could pop this in a manual equalize charge and boil that lead sulfate off the plates of those batteries and mix the acid in better now one thing is good, forgive me for not standing outside and, and talking about it as I talk to you, but one good thing is when I was moving the batteries, a lot of bubbles floated up and mixed through the solution. So I think moving those batteries around helped mix the, mix the acid in while I was rolling them across the yard. It was helping me out, I think, in mixing the acid. Um, I'm going to explain, there's something called stratification, if I got the word right. There's the, it's getting brighter out, but it's still snowing. The acid is heavier than water, if I'm getting this right, and will sink, and then the water will congregate at the top of the battery cells. And the heavier acid will then be down lower, and you won't have a proper mixture, and you won't have a proper battery capacity. And that's why you want to do an equalized charge, and that boils the water and mixes the acid with the water properly so I really could use some some good heavy-duty solar power some good sunlight to boil that a bit and mix it up nicely but I don't know what the weather's gonna be in the next couple days it's really really cold and cloudy and they first have to be topped off properly I am surprised it's showing a green light I am absolutely surprised that it's showing a green light because 12.2 volts, I don't think even at 20 degrees, is actually properly charged. Um, 
but I'm no expert. So I'll see, check it back with it later. This is a happy battery day for the off-grid solar tiny house on wheels. Just uh, reporting the happy status of my new solar-powered forklift batteries. Actually, these are the old batteries that I got for junk as scrap metal. And I got them for below scrap metal price. Way below. So this is a good experiment to see how they will power the tiny house on wheels. There we've got it going into a little bit of absorption mode every once in a while and blinking. So uh, it, it knows what it's doing. Hopefully it'll be alright. Well the sun is out. Well, somewhat. Um, it's sort of filtered behind the trees, so it's not hitting the solar panels full on. So I'm not getting full power. The sun is a little bit too low for that right now. I am getting 121 watts. I've got 15.4 volts on the battery bank. And, um, yeah, I guess it's 7 amps coming in. So 15 volts, that's good. That should cause some gassing. So I'm hoping that they will gas and it'll mix up the fluids nicely, the acid in the water. That's a very good thing to have this high voltage on those forklift batteries. So the charge controller is the best way actually for the forklift batteries. This TriStar MPPT solar charge controller is one of the best things you can do for your forklift batteries if you're using them for off-grid solar power. Um, this keeps flipping off into absorption mode. Of course the cloud just went over so the uh, overall power just d diminished a bit. But it's definitely definitely good to see some power going into those old forklift batteries. I do think they're going to power the tiny house very nicely. I'm going to do some research on the... Um, I'm going to do the specific gravity later on and do some research on the voltage at this temperature for the forklift batteries because it is only 19 degrees and I'm thinking they're going to settle to about 12.3, 12.4 something volts later on today. 5 amps is nothing. 5, 6 amps coming in, that's nothing for these 525 amp hour battery cells. That's one one hundredth of the power, of the capacity. So it would take about, uh, what would it be, about a hundred hours to get that power? to charge them up at that current so that is very important to watch your total power coming into your house and compare it with your total power going out and make sure that you do have enough power coming in to compensate for what you're using each day so I flipped on the power inverter so I'd have internet because I don't have an adapter somebody got out of my case but why don't I um, switch the internet modem over to DC power well because I cannot find a plug to fit the modem it's a special plug that nobody carries and I can't find it yet and unless I cut the cable and void the warranty um, there's no other option until I find a plug I'm considering cutting the cable but I really hate to do that because it's not my device so yeah so I turn on the inverter and look red light and we go down to 11.9 volts. This is uh, really not cool. So I'm having the same effect I had with the golf cart batteries. Although these batteries, these forklift batteries, were at 12.2 before turning on the inverter. I mean, at resting before I put put them out in the sun, the solar panels and everything. They were up to 14, 15 volts with 100 some odd watts of power coming in but that went away now we're down to 32 watts coming in and kicked on the inverter have the modem running and charging the laptop and boom 11.9 volts 11.8 volts not cool so it might be the inverter I'm gonna try plugging in a, um, a different inverter and kick this one off for now and see what happens now I plugged in the other inverter a 12 volt cigarette lighter plugged inverter and the batteries, uh, they went up to 12.2 with the power disconnected, but went back down to 11.9. So, um, yeah, definitely the batteries are, are going to be sulfated. Oh, went up a little bit. The forklift batteries are sulfated, and they're going to take some time to restore. 
it's definitely not going to be overnight success with those used old forklift batteries. So I'll probably fire up the Harbor Freight Generator and let that run for a while outside with the um, Schumacher battery charger, putting some current into them and hopefully keep them going better. I'm going to go out right now and test it out with a hydrometer. I have the hydrometer outside acclimatizing to the uh, the outdoor temperature. So when that's done, I'm going to go out and check the specific gravities of each battery cell. This is Troy from the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project. Coming out to check out my batteries, the specific gravity of the batteries. I've got my safety goggles on. I am not going to play around with acid and take risks with that. So to make this smooth and easy I'm just going to remove the tops of each battery cell. Get them out of the way so I can just work on through each of these in a row. I have had the hydrometer outside compensating for the temperature make sure my camera is recording properly it is cold out and everything is having hard times out here so I've had this outside getting used to the temperature out here so let me suck out some water in the battery we are showing Nothing. Here we go. Needed to get more fluid in there. Okay, so we are looking at not very good. We're looking at in the red. I'm trying to see where the number is. It's at eleven point eight. So much snow and ice out here, it's really frustrating. 11 point... Everything's froze up, it's hard to see what I'm looking at. 11 point... Oh no. 2.6... Oh, this thing is fogging up on me, it's really awkward. One one five zero one one five zero. All right, and it says compensate. Take a uh, twenty minus twenty six. So the batteries are definitely not in a good state of charge. Which I figured anyway. They're going to be badly sulfated. Get all the air bubbles out of there. Yeah, we're looking at roughly about the same. top off that cell a bit. It looks like it's topped off but I guess it's a little bit lower. These are deep cells so this gauge is really hard to get in there far enough. Tap out all the air bubbles. Yeah we're looking at roughly about the same level. Definitely in the red. Get the fluid out. 
There's some deep cells. Okay, this cell now. This cell's looking a little bit better. Uh, one, two, zero, zero. Before adjustment, minus 25 for the adjustment. That one's not too hot either. So the batteries are not charged. I'm going to fire up the Harbor Freight generator and my battery charger, as I said I would do. And I'm going to get some power into these things. I'll set it on the 50 amp setting. I'm going to go in and do my math. I think 50, watt, 50 amps DC. I had to do the math, but should be less than the 800 watts capacity of the Harbor Freight generator. Yeah, it is less. It's going to be just up on the edge, on the borderline of the maximum output of that generator, putting 50 amps into these. So I'm going to put these up at 50 amps on the uh, charger for a while get some power into them and see if I can boil that electrolyte a little bit well here's something interesting to note I decided to go with 20 amps for now and the voltage jumps right up under charge somebody on the comments said that those golf cart batteries should have jumped up in voltage under charge and people figured, well, maybe my charger was bad. But I realized through testing, sorry about the shakiness, I realized through testing that the charger was not bad. Neither is the generator. The batteries, those golf cart batteries, were bad out off the shelf from the store. Now, you can see this is taking a charge. The voltage is coming up when I turned on the generator. Actually, a surprising amount compared to the golf cart batteries, because I never used this charger in anything, anything but those golf cart batteries before. So I'm quite surprised to see 13 and a half volts in this right now. Now, I've only got a third of a tank of gas in the little generator, 800 watt Harbor Freight generator, which is certainly enough to put out two amps of AC power to run that, to put out 20, amps into the uh, battery bank so anyway it's not really bogging that thing down much at all to run that um, actually it was funny when it's kicked in I wasn't even sure that the charger was pulling any current out of that generator because it was didn't make a lot of difference in sound level I want to thank somebody who is in the comments suggested alternating the batteries every other battery so it's minus to plus to minus to plus and that way all I have to do is put the cables in on the ends like this see so I don't remember who said that but thank you for the simple little tip makes it simplicity of wiring ease of wiring up the batteries that way so I'm gonna let that run a while at 20 amps until that gas tank runs out and then I might come out and do 50 amps for a short while see if I can boil some of that electrolyte in there a bit. But it's definitely they're going to be sulfated after sitting so long. 